I'm Marie Reavy. I'm the National Chair of the Christian Police Association and also the National Lead for Faith and Police Together. I've been working on Faith and Police Together for about 18 months now and it was a new initiative that aims to build bridges between the police and the local faith community. We want to build prayerful, practical involvement in local policing issues that are of direct relevance to churches and the communities they serve. We want to see stronger, safer neighbourhoods being built that will help to transform our communities. I'm trying to encourage the police to see our churches and faith communities as a partner at the partnership table. And likewise, I'm trying to encourage you, the church, to be all that you are called to be, to see the kingdom of God advance, to be in those places, in those meetings where you as the church are needed most. Over the last 18 months, I've been looking at four key priority areas where you, the church, can help to tackle some of the wicked issues in society. Those issues are addiction, homelessness, serious youth violence and loneliness amongst many other things. I visited lots of different projects and initiatives that are happening across the UK. The church is doing so much but there's so much more that we can be doing. As a result of all the work that I did last year, I collated that into a guide called the Faith Communities Guide to Engaging with Police. You can download a copy of this guide from our website, www.faithandpolicetogether.org.uk or the Christian Police Association website, www.cpauk.net. The guide covers a variety of things. Uh, I'll go in in a little more detail later on the addictions and homelessness, that kind of stuff. But it starts with how to engage with your police. Do you know what the problems are in your community? Do you engage with your police? Relationship is the only way we're going to build trust and confidence. And it's the best way you're going to get to know what's really going on in your community. There's some really simple ways that you can start to engage with your police. Firstly, I just want to encourage you to thank them. Obviously, at this moment in time, it has to be done from a safe distance. But we, as the police, are often not thanked. I'm fortunate. I'm in a role where I get to speak to lots of churches and lots of Christians. And you guys are great at encouraging me in what I do. But many of my colleagues very rarely get thanks. So that's a really simple way. And at this time, as you're wondering how you can engage with your police and what you could potentially do, you could write to them and thank them. Send positive messages on social media, as well as if you see them at a distance, say thank you for all that you're doing. When we start getting back to normal, whatever the new normal is going to be, attend local priority setting meetings or community engagement events. Make sure you hear what your community is saying. These events are great for you to do that. They're open meetings for the members of the public to come along and engage and share what the problems are that they are facing, what you are facing in your community. But I want to encourage you not to just go with problems. I want to encourage you to be the solution. Think about how you can help to tackle some of these issues. Be praying into those issues and partner with the police and other strategy agencies to help tackle those issues. If you see a crime, report it, be a witness and support the police in their prosecution and their investigation for it. Invite your local officer to come to some of your uh, social action groups and meetings, find out what they can potentially speak or maybe give an input in to your groups, but also allow them to be there so that those that you engage with can engage with the police and find out some information that they may need to, or maybe even it's a case of, it's the first and only time they're going to be able to report a case of domestic violence or abuse. 
become a friend or a community partner with the Christian Police Association is a great way that you can engage with your local Christian community within your police service. There's some of the ideas. I think the guide then goes on to talk about potential for working for the police. The police service is an amazing career to work in. It's a great job. We get to defend the defenceless, seek justice for those that are oppressed. We bring peace into chaotic situations and much, much more. But it's not just about being a police officer. There are so many roles in the police service that you could do, whether that's in finance, HR, be a lawyer, administrator, a call handler, a jailer, a police community support officer. The roles are endless. All of them need you and Christians to be salt and light in those environments. The more Christians we have in the police service, the more it will be impacted for the kingdom of God. Another option you could do is volunteer for your police. There are numerous ways you can do that. Uh, the most obvious one would be a special constable, which is becoming a police officer on a voluntary basis. You get all the roles of a police officer, but you also get to remain in your normal day job. It's a great way to get an insight into what it's like to be a police officer, what's going on in your community, be part of your local police, but at the same time remain in the job that you currently do if you love that and feel called to that. But you could also become a chaplain. That's a great way to support your local police. Uh, there's so much need for people to be able to have someone to talk to. Chaplains get to do a whole range of things, but they are there, they're the eyes and ears for officers, but they're also a great link into the community. You could become a police support volunteer, work for Community Speed Watch or Neighbourhood Watch. There's many ways that you could volunteer for your police. Again, building relationship and partnership, which would then enable you to find out what some of the needs are and how you as a church could help. The fourth section goes on to talk about get educated. It's great. The church is full of compassion. We want to help people. Jesus tells us to go and feed the poor and help uh, the lost. The Good Samaritan is a, one of the best stories for that. However, comp compassion without competence could lead to more harm. And I want to encourage you to get educated about some of the needs that are in your community. Do you understand addiction? Would you know what to do if someone who was an addict turned up on a Sunday morning and asked for help? Or would it overwhelm you? What would you do if some of your youth were getting involved with online cyber related bullying and crime? Do you know what those problems are? Do you know how to understand that stuff? Because you need to. So I want to encourage you to get educated around these things. Understanding the problem will enable you to help to solve the problem. Understanding trauma is a key one that we're going to need to do more and more of in years to come. The internet is a great place to start looking for advice and information. I warn you, as I'm sure you're aware, there are some bad information sites out there. However, there is much good information available on the internet and it's a great place to start. It might be that your local service providers are able to give an input and training. So here in Norfolk, we have the Matthew Project and they've been doing training for churches around addiction, how to spot the signs, what things look like and so on. It may be that your local service provider does something similar. Next, get connected. So often I see churches doing the same thing in competition. That's not what we should be doing. Unity is either we work together or we can work together as well by filling the gaps that each other aren't doing. So I want to encourage you, find out what is going on in your town or in your city, in your area. Don't compete with doing the same kind of project, but 
fill the need, fill the gap or work together to strengthen the project that's already happening? How do you promote your projects? Do the police, do schools, do the council and other strategy agencies know what you're doing and what support is available for some of their clientele? You must make sure that you are promoting what you are doing as best as you are po as possible so that the, those that need your support most get your support and get connected. Time and time again, I've heard people saying, oh, I never realised that that church was doing that and that church was doing that. I was thinking about that. When you talk to each other and you know what's going on, you will be far more effective in what you're doing and find out what the local charities and things like that are doing as well. So that, again, you can work together to see the biggest impact for the kingdom of God. Then we come into the main bulk of the guide, and that's how you can serve your community and meet the need. The guide is broken down into the areas that I mentioned earlier, but it has far more information than just addiction, homelessness, serious youth violence and loneliness. These things may sound daunting. You may be sat there thinking, there's no way I could ever help someone who's suffering with addiction. But I can tell you, every church, every person has a role that we can play in preventing or restoring someone from addiction or homelessness or something like that. There are courses that your church could run to help prevent young people from going down the route of crime and homelessness and addiction in years to come. That they could also support parents to enable them to parent well, to bring up more well-rounded children. Courses such as Family Matters, mentoring schemes and educating. Make sure your youth groups are educating your young people. Do, your young, do you share in your youth groups ways in which the gospel, the good news of Jesus relates to someone who is suffering at home, the pain of um, a divorce or peer pressure or anything like that, that where they might try and um, take drugs to fit in or take away the pain or they might start cutting to take away the pain. Can you relate Jesus to some of these issues that are affecting your young people. Then you've got the restorative side of things. This could be an area that you think, I can't do that at all. But actually there are many churches out there that this would be the area that they thrive. Mentoring for someone who's an, ex, uh, an offender, ex-offender, uh, a drug addict or alcoholic in recovery is a great example of how we can come alongside people and help them to walk the walk that Jesus wants them to walk. 12 Steps Recovery programs are numerous uh, and there's several of them mentioned in the guide. Supported housing is another option, whether that is for someone who's coming out of prison through to um, someone who's just come out of rehab, or maybe actually they're just struggling and because of the connections that you've got, maybe you're engaging with the probation or the uh, the prolific offender management team or something like that that you might have a connection and you can say well actually we could we could support this person we could work with this person all of these things are ways that you can help make a difference to the police and the wider society and economy i want you to imagine for a moment a guy who's a crack heroin user has been for years his partner is two. They've got two young children in and out of social services care. And when he's out of prison, crime spikes through the roof. He's a domestic burglar. Several years ago, God showed me a picture of this person in particular. He showed me him saved, added to the church. His partner added to the church, both set free from addiction. They were supported by the church they were doing well. They were being mentored by the church. He got a job for the first time in his life. Social services were really happy with how the family were functioning. Not only did they give the children back, but they 
withdrew all support because they knew that they were being well cared for and well looked after with the support of the church and how the family were doing. He stopped committing crime. The knock-on impact of that is there's no longer victims of crime, which means there's reduced demand on the police, the prison service, the probation service. The NHS wins because he's no longer in and out of hospital with sepsis and overdoses or wanting his methadone script. The education system wins because they've now got two children living in a loving, nurturing, supportive environment and not in and out of care. Department of Work and Pensions wins because he's actually paying taxes for the first time in his life instead of taking benefits. The list goes on and on. Then God said to me, now imagine that with 10 families. Now imagine that with an entire town or an estate. What is your role in seeing addiction broken and the other things in your community? The list is endless. And it's not just those four things. The church is already engaging well in dealing with human trafficking, loneliness, uh, this coronavirus outbreak has caused the church to really rise up and think about how we engage with people stuck at home and who are lonely. There are numerous ways in which you can show support and hospitality to your police. I mentioned earlier about thanking your police. Stop a copper is a great thing to do. Stop your police and thank them and just show them you care. But there's many other ways. You could offer them your building ideally for free or a significantly reduced charge. Offer to host your local community priority setting meetings there, potentially training. I know some churches who are opened up for the dog sections to do their dog handler training in them. Dog sections always need new buildings and new places to train. It could be that they use it for police training or other meetings at a time when budgets have been reduced significantly across the country, things like that could make a real difference. You've also got the potential of supporting your local police in practical ways. In Cambridge, there's a church that has a full counselling suite and they've partnered with the Christian Police Association to provide counselling services for officers if they want them free of charge on top of the service that's available within force. I know that this service is being used and is very much appreciated. Many forces have partnered with Christians Against Poverty and are providing cap money courses to officers and staff. Is this something that you could be part of? Again, you could join the Christian Police Association as a friend or if, as a community partner if you're a church or an organisation. Find out if there's a way that you could support them in running a course, whether that's an alpha course or something similar. Join the Christian Police Association. It will encourage your local Christian officers. It's a great way to get connected, to find out what's going on from a Christian perspective in your police service. You may even find that you've got prayer points and things like that that you can get involved in as well, as well as other practical ways. And as I said earlier, consider being a chaplain. But most of all, I want to encourage you, if you do nothing else, to pray. I believe in a miracle doing almighty God who answers prayer. I believe that Father wants to answer our prayer and see his kingdom come in this nation. And I want to encourage you to be praying for your community and for your police strategically. Think about that a picture of addiction that I shared a little while ago. Are you praying that those suffering from addiction would come to know Jesus? Are you praying for children in abused families or being neglected that the kingdom of God would break in 
that they would end up in stable home environments so that they don't end up down the route of addiction and crime and being a victim of crime in the future. Things like that need to be prayed into. We want the kingdom of God to come. We want crime to stop, not because it reduces demand on police or other statutory agencies, because that's what Jesus would want. He would want to see the addicted set free. He would want to see the abuse being stopped. And we need to pray into the deep rooted causes of these things that have a significant impact on our society. So I encourage you to find out what the needs and the deep rooted issues in your community are and start to pray about them. Start to pray for the kingdom of God to come. Start to pray for crime to reduce. Start to pray for some of these things in a really strategic and persistent manner. I believe that we will see miracles when we start praying in ways like this. The National Day of Prayer for Police is on the 25th of June this year. There'll be lots of information on the Christian Police Association website. Again, that address is www.cpauk.net. There's a whole section on there on prayer. And I encourage you to have a look. And nearer the time, follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. You can do that even today. But we will constantly be posting prayer suggestions and different ways that you can be praying for your police. The National Day of Prayer is a great way to really let your local police know that you care for them and you are praying for them. In the guide, there's a whole section on prayer for your police, and just to give you some ideas and pointers about what, they, what you could do. And I just want to encourage you with Jeremiah 29.7. It says, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. So that's a summary of the Faith Co Community's Guide to Engaging with Police and an, a very brief overview of Faith and Police Together. But I truly believe that when the police and the faith communities and the church in particular work together to go into these dark places that we deal with all the time and are so often hidden, we will see our communities transformed and society changed. <laughs>